Hello everyone and welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. Today we are looking at vectors again, another lesson in our series and our purpose today is to show that two vectors are parallel to each other and that is our objective to show that two vectors are parallel to each other. Before we start looking at questions we need to ask ourselves what does it mean to be parallel? And to be parallel, we might remember that parallel lines move in the same direction and they don't meet. Parallel lines have the same direction or the same gradient. And when it comes to vectors, to prove that two vectors are parallel, we need to show that one vector is a multiple of the other. That is, if you take a number and multiply it by one vector, you will get the other vector. Or if you take one vector and divide it by another number, then you get the other vector, essentially the same thing. So to prove that two vectors are parallel, that is what we do. We show that one vector is a multiple of the other. And especially given that they do not have any letters in common in their names, that's important. Um, so for example, if, if we have the vector OA and the vector CD and OA is equal to AB in its, in its component form and CD is equal to some number multiplied by AB, then we can say that OA and CD are parallel to each other. Also, when we're looking at vectors in their algebraic form, if OA is equal to some A plus B and CD is equal to some number k multiplied by a plus b, then that tells us that the vectors OA and CD are parallel. Notice that they do not have any letters in common in their name. This is OA and this is CD, so there's no um, common letter in these names. As long as that is the case, and you can take a number, any number, and multiply it by one vector and get the other vector, then that tells you that the two vectors are parallel. So let's look at some CXC questions that we can use to bring out this idea. Um, our first question here is um, shows us that this, this in the diagram, the coordinates of P and Q are 2, 4, and 8, 2. The line segment joining the origin 0, 0, and the point P may be written as OP. So we're, we're being told that um, these are vectors. So the first question is to write OP, or sorry, to describe OP, what term is used to, to describe it. And we notice that P is connected to 0, 0. It is mentioned here for a reason. It's connected to 0, 0. And we know that if a vector is connected to 0, 0, then we call it a position vector. So let's just write down the answer to part one here that the term used to describe OP is a position vector. All right, moving on to part two, we need to write each of these vectors in their component form, OP and OQ. And because they are position vectors, we only need to write down the end point here in the form of a column matrix. So OP is equal to 2, 4, and OQ is equal to 8, 2. So we have written OP and OQ in the form AB. Sometimes this a, B is used instead of X, Y, but it essentially means the same thing. It would want you to write it as a column matrix. And now we are at, um, this was A and B. All right, so we are now at part C. And part C says we are to find the vector P, Q. Now, if we are at P and we want to get to Q, then what we can do is that we can go back from P to O and then O to Q. I remind you to think about it in terms of having a flight from one country to another country where there are no direct flights, for example, and you have to take a, a plane ride to one country and then to another, to the, to the country where you want to go. So you have to interconnect through. So P, Q would be equal to P, O. And plus... OQ. And so we can write that down using these component forms that we've just written down. P 
PO is the opposite of OP. So if we're going to write down PO, we must reverse the signs of, um, of OP. So that will give us negative 2, negative 4. And then we're going to add um, OQ to that. And OQ is 8, 2. Once we add that, we realize that we get 8 plus negative 2 is 6. And 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. So PQ is um, 6, negative 2. Part 3 of the question says, given that OP is RQ, determine the coordinates of R. So we are being told that OP is equal to RQ. And that is equal to uh, 2, 4. We, OP is equal to 2, 4. We had that already. So we have to find the coordinates of the point R so that um, OP and uh, using the information OP equal RQ. So if we want to find the coordinates of R, we need to find the position vector OR. So to find OR, what we can do is that we can go from O to Q and then go from Q to R, wherever it is. So OR will be equal to OQ plus QR. Now, this vector here, RQ, is given as 2, 4. But here we want to use it as QR. So remember, when we're going to choose a vector in its opposite direction, we must change the sign of its components. So OQ um, is 8, 2. We write that down. And QR would be the opposite of RQ here, which would be negative 2 negative 4 and we add those two together 8 plus negative 2 gives us 6 and 2 plus negative 4 gives us negative 2 and we are finished with that part and now the final part of the question says state the type of quadrilateral formed by pqro so pqro which tells us that r is somewhere down here And the, the, the coordinates of R, we said the coordinates of R, we didn't write on the coordinates of R. That's something we often um, overlook. So let's fix that. OR would be 6, negative 2. So the coordinates of OR would be 6, comma, negative 2. That's important not to, not to miss. All right. And now we are going to state the quadrilateral form. Notice it's a quadrilateral. And from what we can see, OP is equal to RQ. So OP equal RQ and we that is equal to um, 2, 4. Also we see that um, PQ that's this side PQ is equal to OR which is 6, negative 2 and any quadrilateral that has opposite sides equal, so this quadrilateral has this side, um, this, this pair of sides equal, this pair of sides is equal to this, and this pair of sides are, are equal to each other. And that tells you that the shape that has been formed is a parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral with opposite sides equal. So we can say here for our answer that this is a parallelogram P-A-R-A-L-L-E-L-O, -L -L -E yes. And this is how we justify our answer. We don't just say it's a parallelogram and leave it there, but we give some kind of proof to show that we know what we're talking about. So when the question says justify your answer, don't just look at it and say, okay, the shape is a parallelogram. You need to say why you think it's a parallelogram. And it is a parallelogram because opposite sides are equal. Now let's look at another question where the components are in algebraic form. So um, here we have OB is equal to 2B. 
and OA is equal to 2A, and we're told that P and Q are the midpoints of OA. And and um, AB. So Q is the midpoint of AB, and P is the midpoint of OA. Um, OA is equal to 2A. So all of this is equal to 2A, which would mean that this part here is A, and this part here is A. Just filling in the information before we start working in. And OB is equal to 2B. So all of this here is equal to 2B, going in that direction. And now what we're asked to find is the vector AB. So here we are at A, and we want to get to B. So we want to fly from A to B, but we have no straight flight. So we have to interconnect through O. So AB, answer in part 1A, AB would be equal to going from A to O, and then from O to B. And remember, this is not equal in terms of distance. It's equal in terms of effect. As a vector, going from here to here and then here to here is the same as going from here to here because we get to the same point. So AB is equal to AO. Remember, AO, OA was given as 2A, but we're using it in the opposite direction, so we must write it as a minus 2A and plus 2B because this one is going in the direction that we want. We can turn that around and make it a little prettier and write it as 2B minus 2A. Or you can leave it alone as it is. So we have answered part A, and now we need to find part B, which is PQ. Now, how do we get from P to Q? That is, how do we get from here to here? You can take the long road P to O, O to B, and then B to Q. So I'm just going to take the shorter road here and say PQ is equal to PA. plus AQ. And AQ, remember, Q is the midpoint of AB, it was said here. Um, and if it is the midpoint of AB, then, then um, AQ is equal to a half of AB. So we have PA uh, plus a half of AB, and PA is equal to A plus a half of AB, and AB is equal to 2B minus 2A. So we just um, simplify this and add up. So we have a, a here, plus half of 2B is B, and half of minus 2A is minus A. And this simplifies down to give us B for our answer. So PQ is equal to B. And now the question says that part three, state two geometric relationships that exist between OB and PQ. And from what we can see based on the diagram, um, OB and PQ look like they are parallel to each other, but you shouldn't take these things at face value, especially because of this little term that is um, phrase that is placed here, not drawn to scale. So when something is not drawn to scale, do not let your eyes deceive you with it, rather depend on your numbers. So AB, um, OB is equal to 2B and PQ is equal to B. And what we see here is that OB is a multiple of PQ. That is, if we take PQ and multiply it by 2, we get OB. So um, OB is equal to 2 times PQ. So we have shown that OB is a multiple of PQ, and because it's a multiple of PQ, that means two things. One, um, OB is parallel to, to um, OB is parallel to PQ and also OB is 